In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make this 3D Y2K-ish chrome type logo. Um, it's giving tribal vibes. It's giving chrome. It's giving so many aesthetics. I don't even know how to put it into words. But if you want to keep watching this or if you want to learn how to make this, um, just stick by. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously get inspiration for this tribal-esque logo. So the first thing I do is go on Pinterest and I look up tribal graphic design and a whole bunch of them should pop up. And from here I just click on the ones that speak to me the most so I can copy and paste them back to my Illustrator artboard and then we can go from there. And hopefully this is showing all the artists names who made this um, or you can try to find them themselves. Okay, so now that we're back on Illustrator and we have our inspiration, um, a lot of the basic shapes of these logos is like an inverted triangle type of situation. So I'm just going to make an inverted triangle um, with, the, with the line tool and then I'm going to use the the vector tool i think it's what it's called as my guide for my actual shapes that i want to create and in the properties panel i just add a outline or a stroke as they call it eventually i do fill it in and then i just expand the appearance of the object by going to object expand appearance and that'll just make it the actual shape that it is and then I stretch it out a little bit because remember this is a guide so I kind of want mine to be longer and squished together. Um, I suck at explaining things but hopefully that made sense. <laughs> I'm just making my artboard bigger here so I can have more space to work on the actual logo. Okay, now that I actually know the name of the tool, which is the pen tool, <laughs> I grab the pen tool and then uh, a lot of similarities I noticed in these tribal-esque logos is that they pretty much have a lot of sharp ends and curves. So I'm creating an abstract shape that goes along with my guide. So like it'll look like a V um, using the pen tool and also the curvature tool. So I'm gonna go back and forth with those depending on if I want a straight line or a curve. And I, as you see me doing here, I simplify the tool by right clicking my mouse and pressing simplify and then sliding the slider as much as I want. This basically just make, like gives your shapes, your shape less uh, vector points. And it also kind of makes it better a little bit sometimes. Sometimes it makes it worse, so it's a gamble so I pretty much like this shape so yeah each side is it's all about like with these tribal things it's all about like symmetry and then like a centerpiece so I'm gonna make each side the same so I just copy and pasted that same shape that I made to the opposite side and I like switch the sides as you can see and I want to have a heart in the middle um, a lot of these do have hearts so instead of like going on google and looking up a basic heart shape i just copied or i used the pen tool and i traced this heart shape right here um hopefully that's not considered plagiarism but yeah and then you can like adjust it to the actual heart shape that you want eventually but i was just being lazy so I just made it bigger and I dragged it to the center. As you can see, my heart is lopsided. So I did the simplify thing again to see if that helped. And then I used the uh, direct selection tool to like fix up the shape a little bit. Okay, so from now on, I'm just going to be making more abstract shapes to add to this logo to make it a bit more complex. And like I said before, I'm going for symmetry. So what I do to one side, I'm just going to do to the other side. I decided that I wanted that same shape that I already have. I wanted to add it 
as like a bottom piece as you can see here so that's what I did and I merged them together and I really like how this was looking but I felt like there was something missing so as the last shape I'm gonna uh, grab the eclipse tool and then go to FX distort transform pucker bloat to create these little stars and then I'm just gonna adjust it to my liking so I'm gonna add some to the center and then some across the horizontal plane okay so I adjusted the stars and once you're happy with your um, base for your shape we can export it by going to file export as and just make sure it's an SVG so it can be editable in blender okay so now in blender we'll have to import it by going to file import SVG and then I just highlight everything and press S on my keyboard to scale it up um, as you can see I had like a background on my artboard just delete that if that happened to you too and then I'm going to rotate it by highlighting everything and in my keyboard pressing RX90. The first thing I want to work on is the extrusion. So as you can see, these shapes are separate from one another. So I'm just going to extrude everything to my liking. And I'm also um, joining these two shapes because, yeah, they're going to be the same material. So I just... Highlight both of them, right click on my mouse and press join or control J on your keyboard. I kind of want it to be on the thinner side, so that's what I'm adjusting here. And I'm going to go to every shape individually and add an extrusion. And if I want them to be the same material, I can just, you know, join them together. And that'll make everything faster like I'm doing with the stars. And I'm adding a plane by going to add mesh plane um, just so you guys can see everything better okay so once that's done and the extrusion is where you like it for all the separate objects I'm just gonna go ahead and go to that um, panel there and press the little eye icon and that'll hide um, the object and now I'm going to get ready to sculpt my objects so what I want to do is right click convert to mesh then I go to the modifier properties I click remesh and sometimes I do voxel sometimes I do smooth for this I'm doing smooth so I'll just go with 8 9 or 10 whichever one looks best on the object and then I click apply and I'm gonna go ahead and do that to every single object because I'm going to want to sculpt every single object okay so i did that and i hit all the objects that i'm not going to be currently working with so now we're just going to go to object and then go to sculpt mode and i'm going to click on the inflate tool and just start going over it until i i like what i see and for this process i usually go back and forth from the inflate the bulb tool and the smooth tool and i just do that until i like it this would also be a great time to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I'm trying to reach the goal of a thousand subscribers, so I would highly appreciate it. And also, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I'll try my best to answer them. We're going to be doing these this process uh, to every object that we remeshed, so we're just going to be going back and forth from object mode to sculpt mode selecting the object that we want to sculpt and then going back to sculpt mode and like i said i'll be using the smooth tool the blob tool and the inflate tool and yeah just play around with it make it something that you like because then it's always going to be worth it before i even add the material i'm going to add the camera to my view so I'm going to click the little camera icon. I can't move it, so I'm going to press N on my keyboard and select camera to view. And now I can move it with my mouse. And I'm actually going to change the aspect ratio uh, for the camera 
to 1619 or 1920 by 1080 because it works best for this. And by selecting the end on my keyboard, I can also adjust the angle of the camera um, by going to like the little items tab. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the materials. Uh, I'm gonna keep it real simple. Uh, since this is beginner friendly, we're gonna go for a chrome. Chrome always looks good on everything, so <laughs> don't even worry about it. Um, but we're just gonna go for different colors of chrome. So first thing you need to do is hover your mouse in between these two things and slide it over to create a new tab. And then we're gonna go and change this into a shade editor tab. And we're gonna go from object to world and go to add texture environment texture. And this will add <coughs> an environment texture as and just so you know, I am in the render uh, preview tab. And I'm going to go ahead and add an HDRI. I always get mine from polyhaven.com and they're free. And just depending on the HDRI, your metallic material will look completely different. Now I'm going to switch back from world uh, back to object. And I'm going to select uh, an object and add a new material. And this principle BDSF should pop up. You're going to slide the metallic all the way to one and the roughness to zero. And if your object looks blurry like this, just right click your mouse and select um, smooth or auto smooth. And I'm just going to remove and add a new material to all the objects. I In the very beginning, I did play around with the colors, but I'm doing the same metallic material for every object. I'm just switching around the base color for it. There, I'm also playing with the HDRI to see what I want um, for this design. It, like I said, it can drastically change the look of your object. And I finally picked an HDRI that I liked, and I'm just going to quickly switch from EV to the Cycles um, render engine because that's what I usually render in. And if you have a GPU, just switch it to that. It'll make everything faster. I'm going to play around with the shape of the stars even further. Um, just to like add some finesse to my overall logo and make everything look better. So I'm just going to select my shape and then go to the uh, little tab on the left. And you'll be able to extend it vertically or horizontally or diagonally whatever and I wanted kind of like the spikes to extend really far so that's what I tried to do and I also adjusted like where the heart was placed and the size of the other little star elements and feel free to go back to sculpt mode whenever you want to adjust things even further I was going for like a silver, gold, and red color palette, so I adjusted the colors of some of the elements um, to gold, and I brought the um, other star element to the front so it can be more like of a, con a contrast to everything else. I also adjusted the metallic um, element in the heart because before it wasn't really metallic but I decided to go all in with the chrome and I wanted a background for my logo so I decided to go on unsplash.com they have a lot of copyright free images there and I wanted kind of like a cloud background so I just and I like using film photos so I just look up film photography and then I try to find like a cloud photo within that subsection. Once you've downloaded the image, you just have to go to add image background image and then upload the images or image that you want to try out as your background. And it should appear as a plane. You should you probably have to make it bigger by selecting S on your keyboard and dragging. 
And once you've selected an image, just just make sure it's good on all fronts. Sometimes it cuts the logo in the middle, so you just have to move it back. And now I'm just adjusting the view of the image that I want to see within my logo. Okay, so once your image is fully adjusted and ready to render, I'm just going to quickly adjust the um, maximum samples in the render properties. That just makes the rendering faster in cycles, so I usually do like 200. And I render it out real quick just to um, get an idea of what it's going to look like. I actually want to add a little bit of an extra oomph, like it'll add like a glare and like little twinkles and stuff. It'll make everything look better, trust me. So that'll happen all in the compositing tab and I'll show you how to do that right now. So we're currently in layout, so at the very top we're just gonna switch to compositing and we're just gonna add another tab on the side and we're going to click on use nodes and that's this these two nodes are pop up then we're going to click on shift a search and we're going to add a glare node and on this other tab we're going to change it into an image editor tab and we're also going to add a viewer node to that left tab and attach it to the glare node that way we'll be able to see the full image on the right tab we're going to also unselect the background so yeah it's less blurry and the fade is clearly too much so i'm just gonna bring it all the way down and that'll give me less twinkles and then you can adjust the resolution from low to high depending on the look you're going for but like medium is good for this it adds a, little, a bit more blur and i also want to add another glare node but instead of it being a streaks node we're going to make it a fog glow and as you can see it adds like a, a glow to everything just adjusting the numbers these numbers may be different depending on your object so just play around with it and once you're happy with it that's basically the gist um, you can go to image save as and then save this image and that'll be your final render. Or you can just re-render it again if you'd like, if you wanna adjust the resolution and whatnot, which is what I'm gonna do. This is where the rubber meets the road. You have come to the end. If you made it to the end, you're a real one. Like I said, I re-rendered. Um, and yeah, if you like this, comment, like, subscribe, ask me any questions. Um, check out the bio. I'll link polyhaven.com there. Uh, I appreciate all of you guys supporting my videos and I will see you in the next one.